All right, guys, continuing on with Return of the World's Greatest Comic Book Haul. All these books I got for free off of Scotty Hines. I'm doing a series of videos. Uh, eventually, I'll put them in a little playlist. If, you know, they're not there now when you're watching this in the future. But uh, today, we're going to do the ladies of Marvel. These are just some of the books that were the female cast. And uh, a lot of these books that they did solely for the purpose of copyrights. Like, uh, you had Spider-Man, and you had the Hulk, and they just felt like smarting down the line. They were going to turn around and, you know, get the female version so they beat them to the punch. And uh, I'll, I'll start with this one. Ooh. Huh. I pulled out a little something extra there. Okay, so... What we have here is uh, She-Hulk number one, okay? I think John Bushima, or not John Bushima, I think Stan Lee actually wrote this. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, this was the debut. This is the Savage She-Hulk. This is her first appearance, first issue. This is the cousin of Dr. Bruce Banner, and there was uh, an accident, and the only way to save her was to, you know, give her a, not just to take her to the hospital, let's give her a blood transfusion of gamma irradiated blood, so... Yeah, you know, it's a marvel for you. And then uh, this one, number 14, I was really glad to see this. This is uh, number 14 of the Savage She-Hulk. It has the man-wolf on it and uh, Hellcat in it. And it looks like Thunderbolt Ross down there in the circle. But, uh, yeah, there, a couple years ago in one of the many volumes of the She-Hulk book that they had, I think, you know, man-wolf popped up. And it seems like she ended up marrying him or something. I don't know, you know, but... Uh, that's a George Perez designed outfit on the Man Wolf. Uh, maybe one day I'll do a little talk about the Man Wolf. <clears throat> All right, so then I had these, and there's a couple issues I'm actually going to track down. I'm going to track down a number one now, and there's an issue 33 that has a Sinkovich cover with an ode to the uh, Michael Jackson thriller from back in the day. But uh, some Dazzler, and you know Jim Jim Shooter wrote these. I'm pretty sure, and. It's kind of a joke book. She was a disco singer on roller skates. The fact that she survived to end up being in the X-Men and them actually, you know, making her quite the character just amazes me, you know. So, you know, she was a sign of the times there. And actually when she came out, I'm pretty sure that's when disco was starting to die. The radio stations were having, uh, you know, guaranteeing you a no Bee Gees weekend, which kind of bothered me because I like the Bee Gees. I mean, just skip their disco stuff. And as I say this, you know, and you're listening to me, I have, you know, Saturday Night Fever, you know, on the record, and we got a video or two where, you know, my theme songs or background music was disco, so, you know, time, time heals and makes you forgive. So anyway, here's number two with the lecture in there. Uh, the first time I even really heard about the um, um, Dazzler book being out there, we have number three with Dr. Doom was actually in Secret Wars. Uh, Doctor Doom was going over how Claw, uh, a being of sound, um, oh, I'm not going to get into it. But anyway, there's a character named Claw, and uh, he's his whole powers are sound. He is actually solidified sound. That's how his body is. Doctor Doom went over how he ended up on the on the Beyonder world in the Secret Wars, so that Doctor Doom could experiment with him. Uh, I've had this one forever upstairs somewhere, number five there, Blue, Blue Shield. But anyway, it, it all happened in the Dazzler because to get her power, she absorbs sound and it comes out as light. So here is, you know, thus the music. During her performances, she would absorb the light of her band and the music and stuff and make a great light show and people would go nuts and everything. So here's a beam made of pure sound going against Dazzler. So she ends up absorbing him, and then when she ends up fighting Galactus, ooh, Spider-Woman, a little foreshadowing of what's the coming, you know, she ends up shooting him back at Galactus, and he ends up floating around Galactus's ship and stuff, you know. All right, well, we got number 16. Like I said, I'm not real excited about these, but this is going to be kind of fun to read, <laughs> just because I've never gave Dazzler a chance. And if you look, you know, look at her, you know, so 70s roller skates and everything you know oh god all right there we go yep yep number 19 and uh number 24 up there with power man and iron fist okay so that actually leads to these and this there's a pretty big stack of these and what is so funny is i have number one upstairs <clears throat> i had a big run of these some of them were in rough shape. I ended up selling them on eBay. They sold real well. I have her old cartoon series on VHS upstairs. And the beat-up VHS. I used to get up and I loved watching her cartoon. 
I watch them now and I'm like, God, you know. But anyway, it's a big run of Spider Woman. So, you know, here we go. All right. I like Spider Woman. The fact that Bendis brought her back, that's one of the right things he did. Uh, there's a book called Alias. And uh, I'm not going to do the names there because it's, it's late. But originally, Alias was supposed to be Spider Woman as a private investigator because she ended up like supposedly losing her powers by the end of the series or somewhere or seven and I think Mark Grunewald did a bunch of these too but anyway but uh, they turned around and what you know the first issue you know it was a very depressing dark uh, story of a hero who had lost her powers or stopped being something tragic happened to her to where she stopped being a superhero and she was doing a lot of self-destructive stuff a lot of drinking it, it was very uh, gritty film noir I guess is what I would call it I mean it was, a, it was a cop it showed some of the behind the scenes of what private detectives do you know in their job and then she gets with Luke Cage and has anal sex in the first uh, issue so they were like no 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 you have to make somebody else so you have two Jessicas running around so but you know they didn't do that so Bendis ends up bringing her back in the Avengers number 20 some Spider-Man I hope these are showing up get my hand out of the way 22, 23, and we're not, we're not, we're not done yet. Okay, so there's a lot more. Really glad, I'm, I'm really am glad to have these, you know, just, just because even if I read them, they're not good. Any, never saw this one, I've never read this one, you know. I always liked her costume too, I mean, I have no idea how to be objective about it with today's trends and stuff, but, uh, you know, because it's a 70s design outfit. Oh, I always loved this character, man, the Enforcer, just his whole look. Uh, something about the black and the white, and I always wish they made him something more than just kind of like a, an assassin hitman, because with this costume and that mask, I think more theater and stuff, and I think he could have been something else with a different tape. Alright, now we're into uh, 28, still fighting the Enforcer. Still fighting the Enforcer, and with Spider-Man. You know, so. Okay. Uh, number 30 I think we're in the 80s love this cover kept this one werewolf by night but it's got all the you know all these universal monsters picks and whatnot and stuff and just love how they did that all right number 33 then I have never read this one but ain't that a bitch to be looking at a you know an old photograph album and get shot by one of the pictures I hate it when that happens man it's my big fear of reading comics will the uh, action in the big fight, you know, spill out to the real world and take me out. I mean, does insurance cover that? I don't know. Like this one, I want to say that's a Mike Kaluta cover. If it's not, it's a wannabe, but no, it's a Lee Li Liola. Steve Liola. What do you know? Okay, 36. Do not like that cover. Ugh. Alright, 37 with the Juggernaut and Siren. This might be Siren's first appearance. I'm going to have to look this up. But that's the daughter of Banshee. Number 37. I gotta remember to look that up. Alright, number 38. Continue on with the X Men if you look real close there. And at one point, it was not so much a hot book, but when the X Men were super hot, it was one of those books that were like, you know, kind of gave this uh, series a kick in the ass, and that's probably what made it uh, able to go up to number 50. Alright, number 40. 50 cents. So, what are we up to? Probably like 81. Yeah, 81. Yeah, a little bronze tiger there. Is that not bronze tiger? That's DC. This was the flying tiger. Yeah, with Marvel. All right, number forty-one, fighting a dragon. All right, I'm sorry. That just kind of that's bizarre to me. <laughs> so you know, a silver samurai. You know, a woman. You know, a little girl. You know gets a spider antidote and goes to a coma comes out with a bio sting and can fly and I'm fine with that but throw a dragon in there and just fucks me up alright yeah going on oh spider man is back but, I, but he looks like a thief nah we know that's not really spider man looks like they're at a costume party or something back when uh you know the covers actually told you a little bit about the story ooh new logo look out 47. All new Spider Woman. Looks like it's one last. All oh, the Gypsy Moth. I'd like to do something with her and change the costume up a little bit and stuff. I think there's potential for characters there. 
High Ride, number 49. And number 50, photorealistic cover. Very cool. What a way to go out of the main. Alright guys, I'll be back with more. Hang in there.